to everyone. How are you? I hope every one of you will be fine. Today I am going to discuss about a very special topic. Today I am going to discuss about a dasha that I have researched, developed, formulated, conceptualized all by myself. As you know, in Vedic astrology, we find the promise of an event through the horoscope. Then we have to time when that particular event will happen. And we time that using many tools. Transit, progression, dasha, natural fructification, years of planet. Out of these, dasha is one of my favorite. Why? Because transits are repetitive. The progression is also repetitive. Fructification year of planet, known as maturity years of planet, are limited to a particular time frame and they cannot be extensively and universally used for timing the event. However, the dasha systems have no such issue and they can be used safely and confidently universally for timing of events. Now, talking of dashas, there are many dashas. Few are based on the nakshatras like uh, Vimshottari dasha, Ashtottari dasha, Yogini dasha, Kalachakra dasha. Few are based on rashis like Chara dasha, etc. And few are based on natural progression of signs, natural progression of rashis, whatever be the case. Now, as in my practice as an astrologer, and you know, in the history of astrology also, if you see, I think there is no dasha which works almost perfectly. Now, me, myself, as an astrologer, and not only someone who is practicing, but someone who is into researches, who is into doing researches in astrology to make it better for our future generations. You know, the what is the criteria of a guru or what does a guru do? The text of Hinduism answers us that the responsibility of a guru is to learn things from his teacher, learn things from his guru, test those things with experience and add his own experience to the learnings and then pass it on to their students. In the process, talking of astrology, an astrologer have the duty and responsibility to learn things from his guru properly test them extensively, add the rules from his own experience and expertise, and then give it to their students, making the principles better, easy, more applicable, and good to understand. Now, I have this thing since long. I have researched my own method of divisional charts which I have revealed in some courses now, those courses are not available for purchase. So I'm not taking the name which course I revealed it. I have also revealed many of my own Dasha systems. The one that you are going to see today, the one which I'm going to illustrate today for the benefit of the astrological world, I'm giving it for free on YouTube. This is the fifth Dasha that I have researched and is going to reveal. There are some 17, 18 dashas which I have researched and all of them have their particular uses and because I have conceptualized them, created them, researched them, made them, I have also differentiated their uses based on the type of things we want to predict, the type of factors we want to use and the type of conditions which will make the dasha applicable. Once again, before I start, let me emphasize on this particular point. Nowadays, 
people tend to you know read something from a book read something from a magazine or somewhere not giving credit to the original author they tend to you know show it in their own names claiming it as their own research which in most of the cases is either a mere cheating or just a influence kind of a scenario but this particular dasha that i am talking about is written nowhere no published classic no unpublished classic no book no text no author nothing this is completely my mind born child i have thought about it made the formula conceptualized the dasha and have extensively tested it over horoscopes since the 12 13 years of my astrological practice on more than number of charts that i forgot the counting now right so this is all done by me no hint no classic no shloka no decodation complete original research from scratch right this dasha is based on uh, this dasha is based on my own ideas about astrology and how i understand it completely conceptualized by me and this dasha can be applied to any horoscope there is no special condition which will limit you about the application of this, of this dasha this dasha you can apply anywhere i have made a small ppt powerpoint presentation on this so while i talk you see the presentation and if there is any issue in conveying the point that i wish to put here you can get a reference from the powerpoint presentation i have not named this dasha because what happens you know you name a dasha people copy it people copy the name and don't give the reference to the original author i call it shubham alok dasha i have written it volume 1 v1 version 1 because i am sharing it to youtube so that first version but this is basically the fifth i think fourth fifth dasha that i am revealing the concept is very simple sun dasha is for 10 years moon dasha is for 3 years mars dasha is for 28 years mercury dasha is for 15 years jupiter dasha is for 5 years venus dasha is for 27 years and saturn dasha is for 20 years right these are the dasha durations these are for how much time one particular dasha will run okay now the total of this comes to 108 years 108 as we know is a very divine number in hinduism when we chant a mantra we chant it for 108 times and it have multiple great uses not going under emphasizing the importance of the number 108 which i think intelligent readers already know about now the order of this dasha is first the dasha of sun will run then dasha of moon then dasha of jupiter followed by dasha of mercury followed by dasha of saturn followed by dasha of mars and followed by dasha of venus will go now there is one particular point for every horoscope dasha will not start from sun you have to check which ascendant the person is born in and as per the ascendant there is a starting dasha so starting dasha for the ascendant you choose the starting dasha i have formulated an example also right so you choose the starting dasha and there is no bhukta bhogya past portion and the portion which have to be crossed in this scheme so the sun dasha is for 10 years and if it happens to be that in one horoscope sun dasha is applicable right from the time of birth for the next 10 years it will be sun dasha that will run now going further into this for an aries ascendant person sun dasha will be the first dasha other dashas will be in the order for someone born in taurus ascendant moon dasha will be the first dasha it will go into the order and after venus dasha sun dasha will come repeat right for gemini ascendant saturn will be the first dasha ruler for cancer ascendant venus will be the first dasha ruler 
For Leo ascendant, Sun again will be the first Dasha ruler. For Virgo ascendant, Mercury will be the first Dasha ruler. For Libra ascendant, Saturn will be the first Dasha ruler. For Scorpio ascendant, Jupiter will be first Dasha ruler. For Sagittarius ascendant, Sun will be the first Dasha ruler. For Capricorn ascendant, Mars will be the first Dasha ruler. For Aquarius ascendant, Dasha starts from Saturn Dasha. And for Pisces ascendant, the Dasha starts from Venus Dasha. So first you find which ascendant one is born in. Suppose someone is born in Libra, first will be Saturn Dasha, followed by Mars Dasha, followed by Venus Dasha, followed by Sun Dasha, followed by Moon Dasha, followed by Jupiter Dasha, followed by Mercury Dasha. As the Dasha started from Saturn Dasha, it will continue in the order, but it will not repeat. After Mercury Dasha, Saturn Dasha will not come again. So if the person happens to live after 108 years, more than 108 years, then you don't use this Dasha. That will be my advice. Now, because we have talked of Dasha, we have to talk of Antar Dasha also. In this Dasha that I have derived, one Antar Dasha is of four year. This is once again fixed. It is non-variable. If the Sun Dasha is the starting Dasha, Antar Dasha will be Sun Dasha, Sun Antar Dasha for first four year. Sun Dasha, Moon Antar Dasha from four to eight year. And Sun Dasha, Mars Antar Dasha from eight years to 12 years. <clears throat> if one is born in Moon Dasha, then only Moon Antar Dasha for four years will go. If one is born in Mars Dasha, then the Antar Dasha order will be Mars Dasha for four years, Mercury four to eight, Jupiter eight to 12, Venus 12 to 16, Saturn 16 to 20, Sun 20 to 24, and Moon 24 to 26, right? If the Dasha happens to start from Mercury, then Antar Dasha will be Mercury, Mercury first, Mercury, Jupiter after that, Mercury, Venus after that, Mercury, Saturn in the end. If the starting Dasha Lord is Jupiter, then Jupiter, Jupiter first, then Jupiter, Venus. If the starting Antar Dasha Lord happens, starting Mahadasha Lord happens to become Venus, then Venus, Venus first, Venus, Saturn after that. Venus Sun, third Antar Dasha, Venus Moon, fourth Antar Dasha, Venus Mars, fifth Antar Dasha, Venus Mercury, sixth Antar Dasha, Venus Jupiter, seventh Antar Dasha. For Saturn Mahadasha, Saturn Saturn is the first Antar Dasha, Saturn Sun is the second Antar Dasha, Saturn Moon is the third Antar Dasha, Saturn Mars is the fourth Antar Dasha, and Saturn Mercury is the fifth Antar Dasha. Now, every Antar Dasha being four years, only these many Antar Dashas will come. So you see in Sun Mahadasha, there are three Antar Dashas. In Moon Mahadasha, there is only one Antar Dasha. In Saturn Mahadasha, there are five Antar Dashas. In Mars Mahadasha, there are seven Antar Dashas. In Venus Mahadasha, there is also seven Antar Dasha. Jupiter Mahadasha, two Antar Dasha. Mercury Mahadasha, four Antar Dasha. This is set. And this Antar Dasha division is done for every Mahadasha. Right, when you have to further fine tune it, you go to Antar Dasha. After Antar Dasha, I don't calculate Pratantar Dasha, Prana Dasha, Sukshma Dasha, Deha Dasha. These Dashas I don't calculate, and I am also not in favor of calculating them. So, timing the event up to the year, up to the month, up to the day, I use another calculation for that, which to keep the video short, I am not revealing right. Now I shall take an example. This example is of a lady by the name of Sally Kristen Wright. She was an astronomer and there are four major events that have happened into her life. We will see her horoscope and we'll see how brilliantly, excellently, amazingly, with so much ease, this dasha that I have researched, formulated, clearly shows the event without much hustle, without much hard work. What happens when you use a normal dasha, you have to work hard to find the result. 
talking only of vimshotri dasha and the rules that i have read on vimshotri dasha the rules that i know related to vimshotri dasha there are even talking of the minimum number there are at least 70 75 rules to judge the result of vimshotri dasha now you imagine you have a horoscope where the event have already happened you can use this 70 75 rules to justify why this happened but if you have to predict the future event do you think that it is possible to apply all the 75 rules and come to a definite conclusion that this is only this mahadasha antardasha pratyantardasha set which will lead to the event you cannot and this is the major problem what i think you cannot conclude you cannot be decisive vimshotri dasha and other dashas for that matter are not direct because they are not direct they don't see the event simply timing and event become an herculean task what i teach i have a course on dashas by the name of dasha veda i have done two batches of it i think i should do the third batch also <clears throat> right in the dasha bhed which is my course on dashas nakshatra dashas i specifically tell people that the lesser the number of rules better your chances of accurately predicting and accurately and confidently predicting a result right because with 70 75 rules to imagine that one will be able to predict is if nothing then laughable <coughs> at the least right so i believe in a simple fact the dasha lord have to be connected to the house directly by being the lord of the house by being the significator of the house aspecting the house being with the lord just simple normal astrological connections no 2 plus 2 16 jargon i don't believe into that talking of a uh, chart going back to her horoscope this is the chart this i will show you over jagannath pura shortly and i will only use the d1 chart it will very clearly show how the events are just how the events are clearly and confidently see and how easily we can predict using this particular dasha that i have researched and formulated she is born on 26th may 1951 this is a double a rated chart so birth time is nearly very very accurate and we are only going to use the rashi chart surprisingly her ascendant also happens to be 14 degrees of gemini so there is no chance of error at all this is the dasha calculated for her horoscope she was born in 1951 died around 2012 at the age of 61 she only passes through three dasha saturn dasha from 1951 to 1971 Mars dasha from 1971 to 1999, and Venus dasha from 1999 to 2026. Given below are the antar dasha and the antar dasha durations for four four years, as I have already told in the Saturn dasha, Mars dasha, and Venus dasha. Four events. She got married in July 1982 at age 31 in Mars Mahadasha and Jupiter antar dasha. She goes to space on 18th June 1983 at the age of 32 in Mars Mahadasha Jupiter Antardasha. She got a divorce in April 1987 at age 36 in Mars Mahadasha Venus Antardasha, and finally she dies because of disease on 23rd July 2012 at the age of 61 in Venus Mahadasha Moon Antardasha. Now. let's look at her horoscope and see how we are able to see things very very clearly just simply using this particular dasha this is her horoscope <clears throat> she gets married in july 1982 when according to my method it was mars mahadasha and jupiter antardasha the mahadasha lord mars as you can see in the horoscope itself is situated in the 12th house in the inimical sign of taurus along with sun 
this sun is at 10 degree mars is at 9 degree this mars is highly combust also but it is making a connection with the seventh house now certainly there is one thing that is very sure there are only two planets who are making connection with the seventh house one is venus another is mars that is combust in the 12th house in inimical rashi sharing a rashi with gulika that is a malefic and another of venus now just looking at the condition of mars we know that it is a malefic and its influence over the seventh house tells me that her marital life cannot be good so the chances of divorce are already there present in the horoscope if the chances of divorce are not there how can i predict a divorce i cannot now you see according to my according to my dasha calculation it was mars mahadasha and jupiter antar dasha mars is aspecting the seventh house and jupiter is the seventh lord himself right so that is extremely clear about how this is working right even if you look at the navamsha chart right here you will find that mars is situated in pisces you take pisces back to d1 chart it will fall over the seventh lord jupiter and the antardasha lord jupiter was in libra right libra is the sign of venus which is the significator of marriage clearly showing us the event that was about to happen now you see one more particular point she went into space on 18th june 1983 at the age of 32 in mars mahadasha jupiter antardasha now you see this particular mars is situated in the 12th house of like 12th house indicate foreign lands also 12th house indicates spatial space also right everything which is foreign everything which is not us everything which does not belong to us is indicated by the 12th house right so mars is in the 12th house that indicates she going to space this mars is also aspecting the third house of travel short travel i will not say third house of travel i will say and this mars is conjoined with sun also specifically as uh, you know specifically one more point is there this particular mars in the 12th house is with sun also right <clears throat> so this sun gives us something which is you know like astro as going to space is such an event which gives you rise prestige you know you become famous between people these things only come through sun so mars is in the 12th house and the antardasha lord jupiter is situated in the 10th house jupiter is the 10th lord in 10th house which indicates success and specifically indicate professional event and it was a actually a very great professional event you should not forget that she was an astronomer first right and this mars is the 11th lord mars being the 11th lord in the mahadasha and jupiter being the 10th lord in the 10th mars being the 11th lord of fulfillment of wishes and desires in the 12th house of through foreign lands through space through something which is not your domain the mahadasha lord and the antardasha lord jupiter the 10th lord in 10th house clearly indicate that there was going to be a great professional event this can be explained more in depth but keeping in mind the length of video i am not doing that now her divorce happened in mars dasha venus antar dasha i have already told you as we analyze mars it becomes extremely clear to us that this mars is not good for us the only kantak the only thorn in the marital life is this mars only so there is it is evidently clear that in this mars dasha itself marriage will break because he is afflicting the seventh house very badly which i have already explained mars in the 12th house with gulik highly combusted by sun 
okay it aspects the seventh house and the antar dasha is of marriage significator venus this venus is situated in the ascendant which one situated in the ascendant aspecting the seventh house indicates that there is going to be a great event related to marriage because it is connected to the seventh house and if you closely look at this venus this venus being the significator of marriage also is highly afflicted first by the by the 10th aspect of saturn secondarily by the 5th aspect of rahu so a venus the significator of marriage getting dual affliction of saturn and rahu in the mahadasha of mars who is the 6th lord and 11th lord malefic in the 12th house with gulik another malefic combusted by saturn this dasha antar dasha set was very bad for marital life as they both are jointly influencing the 7th house leading her to divorce now the last event related to her death which happened by disease on 23rd july 2012 at the age of 61 happened in venus mahadasha and moon antar dasha venus if you look at this particular horoscope venus is the lord of the 12th house if one have read classics it is clearly told that the seventh lord and the second lord if not the second lord then the seventh lord and if not the seventh lord then the 12th lord brings death now the second lord which is moon is playing in antardasha moon is a great marak the seventh lord jupiter cannot bring death because jupiter is in his own rashi and when a planet is situated in his own rashi he is supposed to give good result so death he cannot cause the third planet to cause death becomes venus which is the 12th lord and this principle that first second lord then seventh lord then 12th lord brings about the loss of life to someone is from an highly authenticated and authoritative astrological classic right so jupiter cannot feature in the list and the other two planets which are as a as a contender to bring death repeat themselves in dasha antar dasha venus dasha moon antar dasha venus is the 12th lord 12th lord in the ascendant getting the two aspect of uh, two malefic aspect one of saturn another of rahu is itself creating a problem to the ascendant curtailing her longevity and second lord moon in the 8th house of death lord of maraka house second lord in the 8th house of death also indicates end of the life which is clearly visible in this dasha that i have formulated and researched and now shared with you right so once again i will want to repeat my point keeping in mind the struggles that genuine students have to face while timing events and predicting accurately with confidence related to dashas antar dashas i embark on a journey to research dashas on my own based on my understanding of astrology these dashas that i have researched this is the fifth one of that these dashas that i have researched are written in no book are written nowhere they are all my research i have formulated it concept formulated them conceptualized them thought about them made them applied them and now presenting with you for the benefit of the astrological world right Thank you for watching the video. Namaskar.